YouTube is Brian Proctor back again with another video and this one is going to be creating your own comic books from start to finish part 8 I believe it is and this one's going to be on ideas now first of all what is an idea Alexa what is the meaning of the word idea idea is usually defined as the content of cognition the main thing you are thinking about or alternatively your intention what you intend to do Okay, so that's an idea. And lately, since I have uh, implicated the Ten Talent Studio thing, I've been getting a lot of uh, artists and writers that want to do a story. And uh, they've shown me their stories or they told me their, about their stories. And they, they, it's basically an idea. It's not a complete story. It's an idea for a story. So I thought I would do a video on taking your idea to completion to make a story. That's not going to be the title. I haven't figured out the title of it yet, but it'll be there by the time this thing is printed out. Okay, so now that you know what an idea is, let's take that to story completion as best as we can. Now, I can't write a story for you because I don't know what your story is, but I can use mine as an example. Usually, when I do videos, I'll come up with stuff off the top of my head just because I can do that, but since I'm more detailed or know more about my story, I'll use my story. It's not a shameless plug about my book, but I know my story and it's a long process to doing a story. So uh, this video might be a little more than 30 minutes, but stay with me because I got a lot of good information for you. Okay, so my story, or should I say my idea. I started out with an idea in 2000. Uh, it was at an old job. Me and another co-worker were talking about an anime that was on back then. And we didn't know the name of it. And I, we were talking about it. And I said, Samurai Clown. And it was Samurai Champloo was the name of the anime. And then the guy was started laughing. He's like, oh, that'd be crazy to see a clown with a samurai sword. And then uh, as I went back to my desk, after I went back to my desk, I started thinking about it. It's like a clown with a samurai sword. So that was the initial idea. Now, to take an idea and to flesh it out, you have to have steps. So my steps were thinking about it. It's like a clown with a samurai sword, a clown. Where does a clown usually hang out at? Circus. Okay, so now the clown with a samurai sword is at a circus. Uh, is it part of his act? Does he use a samurai sword? Why would he have a samurai sword? So I said, well, he's an assassin. He's an assassin. Okay, he's hiding out at the circus. Why would a, a clown... As an assassin hide out of the circus. I said, oh, well, maybe the whole circus could be assassins. They can travel around the world. Everybody loves the circus. And that could be a disguise or a guise for um, a group of international assassins. And the clown could be the main assassin. And so I kind of built up on that story. So now with that, I had to come up with a character. So I don't know if you can see this because I, I laminated. So I decided to do the clown. Now, I did the clown's face because he did, as an assassin, he did one too many jobs and he did something that just completely horrified him. And so he couldn't even look at his face, so he tattooed it with the permanent sad clown face and he left the circus. Now, being that the circus is a group of assassins, it's kind of like the mob or the mafia. Once you join, you can never leave, you know, because they have too many secrets. So that's part of it. And that's rule number one. Once you join, you can never leave. So he, he tattooed his face and he left the circus. So now the rest of the circus group is after him. And they are, as I said before, everybody is a, a, kind of a master assassin in their own way. So he's got them after him. Now, instead of just having a chase, 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 there has to be a meaning for Chase. So I said, okay, he did something horribly wrong, which I won't say because that kind of spoils the whole book. And he couldn't look at himself, so he tattooed his face. So he left. So he had to do something really, really bad to leave the circus to risk them coming after him to kill him. So I kept digging into the story, thinking about it, thinking about it. So he was hired. Okay, let's just I'm gonna get, kind of get into the story a little bit. There's a, like an east side mob and a west side mob. Okay, these boys are always fighting for, you know, territory of territory period. So the, you know, say the east side hired the circus to do a private performance. And they never use the word assassinate or kill or eliminate. 
you know, in case it being taped, a private private performance on one guy. And that guy happened to be the bookkeeper of the other side mob. He had all the information and they were going to kill him, take that information and expose the other side and then take over their territory. So they hired the circus and the ringmaster who usually, uh, what's the word I'm, I'm looking for? Choreographs, I guess, or schedules, everything. He said, this is a simple hit. I'll let the clown do it. You know, he didn't get into it because he was busy preparing the next performance, as in performance, because it is a circus and they do perform circus stuff when they're not assassinating anybody or planning to assassinate anybody. And he is the ringmaster in charge of the circus and he loves the circus. That is his whole life is the circus. Backstory on him when you see the book. Um, so the clown went to assassinate the guy and something went horribly wrong and because of that he took something with him as a, a memento momentum memento of um his last uh performance and unfortunately and not him not knowing that thing he took with him held the secret to the the um mob so you have this side east side west side i think i said east side mob you know went back to check to see what was done to get the little object and it was gone and he knew that the clown took it. So he went back to the circus and said, you know, your buddy botched up everything. And he ran off basically. And the ringmaster found out the clown was gone. So now they're after him. Now the mob is after him and they have to find him before the, the other side realizes what happened because th they know that this mob would have done what was done. So it's basically you got the two mobs and the circus after him. So that's the whole reason for people to want to continue to come to see the story. Now, I told you all that because when young writers and not so much young as in age of people that are just starting or, or new to writing, they'll tell me their stories or they'll, they'll send me their stories. And basically all they have is a character and it usually it's more a super power character. And they'll say, oh, he has uh, flight ability, super speed, super strength. Uh, mind control, teleportation, um, lasers, this. And basically all they're doing is they're tacking on so many powers that it's going to be, the character will be useless because if you have a character with, you know, a thousand powers and who is unbeatable, then who can beat him? You know, and that will be their story. Oh, this is my character and he's going to go fight. Well, if you have a brick wall that nobody can knock down, eventually you get tired of seeing people try to knock that brick wall down and say, you know, this is not worth it. So that's really not a story to have a good story. You have to have a character with some kind of flaws. Now, I always use Superman as an example. I get on Superman and I said in one of my other videos, one of my followers kind of like didn't like the fact that I dissed Superman. I didn't diss him. I was just saying the truth. But I'll give you an example. You get up every day in the morning, you take a shower, you eat, you get in your car, you sit in traffic, you have to go to work, you get to work, you got a boss that doesn't like you, that's fussing at you, you have co-workers that are just whining and nagging and complaining and stabbing each other in the back, and you hate your job, you hate your job, but you have to go to work. So the city comes up with a lottery, one-time lottery, no taxes, for $1 trillion. You know, lottery, $1 trillion. You win that lottery for $1 trillion, no taxes, you're a trillionaire. So the next day, you get up, you take a shower, you eat breakfast, you get in your car, you go to work, you deal with your boss, you deal with your co-workers, and you're like, God, I hate this job. How many people would do that if you want a trillion dollars? Not one person. You might go to work that one day to rub it in everybody's face, but after that, you're not going to go to work. So here you go. You have this, and I'm still on Superman, you have this character who has all these powers and I was looking at a thing on YouTube and they were telling you actually how strong Superman was and how he doesn't have to breathe, he doesn't have to eat, he doesn't have to drink, you know. So um, you have all, he has all these powers, but yet he goes to work from nine to five to make a couple of dollars to pay for an apartment, to get some food. You're a demigod, you don't need that. So he's got they could either fast as a flash or faster than a flash. And I, I saw a thing that said the flash was as fast as, as thought itself. He's faster than thought. And how fast is a thought? So anytime somebody hits Superman and 
knocks him through a building. I'm like, come on now. You know, and this is what I'm saying. You, your character is too powerful that you mess up and you can't do a story around it. So if you do something, create something that and say, this is perfect, this is perfect, this is perfect. So then later on in your story, you say he has a flaw so that you can write something into it. Then that, your character is not perfect. Too many people have become fanboys by looking at stuff like Dragon Ball, uh, Street Fighter, a lot of other games where the character just wants to increase his power. You know, oh, I got to fight to get stronger, I got to fight to get stronger, I got to fight to get stronger. And there was no story. Now they might throw a little story like, oh, the Earth's in danger and I have to go to this tournament and fight to save the Earth. But you have no story. It's just, I just want to fight to get stronger. And a lot of writers are doing that with their characters. It's fine if you have an all-powerful character, but you need to be able to have a story around it. Because as writers, we see these mistakes that you'll be making, and then that kind of messes up your book. Let's just say, in any action movie, the, near the end, the action hero always gets shot or stabbed, and he's laying on the ground. He's dying from the bullet boom with a knife in his chest or whatever. And then the bad guy may grab his wife or his daughter or something. It's like, okay, I'm going to throw her off the building, watch her as she dies. And then suddenly the guy gets up and he fights. You know, he had a bullet in his abdomen or a knife in his chest. But then suddenly he got the strength to fight and then run out the building before it blows up, jump in the car, rush to the airport before the accomplice, you know, gets on the plane. And it's like we, the movie goers are like, wait a minute. Didn't he just have a, a, a gunshot wound? Didn't he just have a bullet? And then we're supposed to forget about that. So that's the same thing with when you write a character that has so much powers, who's going to fight this character? You know, if you, one guy we had teleportation and uh, if you're fighting a character in the city and you're tearing all this stuff up, just teleport him. You got mind control. Stop him from thinking he's angry. He wants to fight. So this is the thing that I'm saying to young writers. When you start writing or creating your characters with all these powers, why in the world would you fight somebody when you got the ability to stop them? Again, why in the world would I go to work if I have a trillion dollars? It's kind of the same thing. So when you have your idea, you have to go deep into your idea. I have this superpower character. You probably already know why, how he got his powers or so forth. What is he gonna do with his powers? Why is he going to use his powers? What is going to make him get up every day and continue to use his powers? Why does not Superman, who can see, and there was a story, I think John Byrne did the writing. I think he did the writing and the, the art. No, he did the art. But it was about Superman. This was years, years ago. He, he had a son, and it wasn't from uh, Lois Lane. I think she had died or something long ago. But Batman was like old, old, and Superman had a son, and he was Asian. And Superman, all his friends had died, and he was just... I'm going to leave the earth. So he just flew off, you know, when Batman and his son was there. And his son was probably 17 or 18 at the time. And then, you know, the son kept looking and Batman said, you still see him? He said, yes, he, I mean, he's just leaving the Milky Way. So you can see past the Milky Way. So Superman can see everything, but yet he's at work. He's got to be hearing people dying all the time, people screaming for help, kids falling into the pool, drowning, people being raped, uh, kids being kidnapped. Um, uh, people crying, um, praying to God before they commit suicide. But yet you sit at work and you're typing and you go to lunch with your friends and you pretend, you know, you don't hear that stuff. So that's what I'm saying. Why would your character have all these powers and then go eat a cheeseburger with his friends? Why wouldn't he be a full-time superhero? So you have to think about that because your story is going to go up against other people's stories. And then they'll say, eventually, oh, that's stupid. Because if you want to spend all this time and money and energy into a story, I'm sure you want it to be good and you want to have a second story and a third story and a fourth story and a continuation. So you cannot just say, my idea is this superpower guy. He's so strong, he could beat everybody. And I remember uh, watching a video, another one on Superman, and they said how Superman held up the weight of the world for I think about an hour or something like that. So if you imagine the whole world spinning in space and whatever gravity or whatever holds it up just stop and the world dropped and superman held it on his shoulders for an hour until i guess the gravity thing came back or whatever so you got that kind of strength somebody hits you in the face you're gonna fly get knocked out you hit them you're not gonna knock them out so that's the thing i'm saying when you do your characters 
think about what you're doing. You know, you're a God. Who's going to fight a God? Another God? Why would you be fighting in the first place? If I had that kind of power, or I could change people's minds. I'd go around and be like, stop fighting. Stop doing this. Make up with her. But yet you want to fight and knock and tear down buildings and so forth. Okay, so let, let's get off of that. And, and I could go on that for an hour. Let's get on back into developing your ideas. Okay, so the standard path to writing a story, my brain is like three sentences ahead and sometimes I forget the O sentence, is to have who, what, where, when, and why, the five W's, okay? Who is your character? You know, what is he, what does he do? Uh, where is he, uh, where is he born, where is he located? Uh, when does it take place or when is this thing gonna happen and why does he do it? So if you answer those, then you have a good story. Also in doing a story, um, you have to have all your characters because uh, some people have sent me some stories and I asked them, do you have other characters to go along with your story? You can't just have a good guy and a bad guy fighting all the time. You know, where does that good guy live at? You know, does he have friends? Does he have family? All of this has to be into your story eventually. Maybe not in the first two books, but eventually you cannot relate to somebody if you don't know them. So there's got to be like a family. And that's why books about teens usually do good. I'm not going to say everybody went to school, but everybody can relate to going to school, you know, dealing with the teacher and homework and friends and girlfriends and bullies and so forth. So anytime you do a teenage book with uh, stuff, you know, it have to be teenage, but stuff that you can relate to, it makes for a better story. And you have to have something that, the character has to overcome to be more relatable. Like kryptonite, as I said in another video, kryptonite is, you know, who can afford kryptonite other than Bruce Wayne and Lex Luthor and, you know, that's not, that's not a, you know. So you have to have something. So, and I, I told some students one time, the, the, the greater the weakness, the better the character because he has to overcome that weakness in the most, needed time of his powers and that's what makes a good story it's not about continuing to build your character so high that 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 god can't even touch him it's about maybe lowering it some i've started working on a a, a book or oh, i'm writing a book and i designed the characters and instead of going up i've taken them down they all have superpowers and i'll tell you about a couple of the characters uh, one of them is a girl and she can fly. She has the ability to fly, but her top speed is 25 miles an hour. So, you know, but she can still fly. Another character is like, uh, and these are all kids like high school from, you know, what is it? Um, sophomore to, to junior, uh, not junior, whatever, 12th grade, 10th to 12th grade. So another one is a, a kid. He can walk through walls, big kid, big obese, sloppy that kid, you can walk through walls. Problem is, his clothes won't go through with him. So he can walk into a bank and grab the money, but nothing can come out with him. He's just like naked. So if you have him go in and to get some secrets or something, and he's running around naked. He's a big old, you know, chubby kid. So, and the third one is a guy, he has a crazy powerful optic blast, but he's blind. So they would have to hold his head and tell him where to shoot at. So. These are things which, one, are different, and two, you could see the, the, the problems they have to overcome when they use their powers. And I call it lame because they have powers, but they're lame. And there are other characters, but I just want to give you a taste of those three. And something like that, people would get into more than, oh, here's this super duper dude. And then I know a friend who's doing a book, and he's got a super, super, super dude. And there's another guy doing a book, got super, 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 super dude. So how strong can you get? As I say, the stronger you get, the stronger you have to, to, to have an opponent to fight. So think about more or less your story of why, how, um, when, where, what is the reason for your character being in existence? Once you figure that out, then I think everything else is gonna be kind of start falling in line. And then what is the end of your book? If you say, I wanna do a book, how many books do you want to do? Do you want to do a thousand books? You want it to continue forever? It's best to pick a number of books. Say, I want to do 12 issues. That way you can have an end to your story and then say, okay, at the end, 
he loses his powers. Okay, how does he lose his powers? Uh, later on, and now I'm going making stuff up in my head, which I, which I usually do. You can say he found out, like in issue four, that his powers were limited. It's like a battery. Once it's drained, he's going to lose it. So he could only use his powers so much per day. He decided, I'm going to use it so much per day. But the villain found out his powers were, even though he was basically untouchable, the villain found out he only had so much power, so he would do a little uh, chaos here, a little chaos there, a little chaos there, a little chaos there, so the guy could keep flying over and then helping while he's losing his power. So when he only has like 10% of his powers, that's when the villain comes and says, okay, now it's time for me to destroy you. Now that alone is a good story to make people want to continue to come back to your book. But as I say, if you have that brick wall that nobody can knock down, and everybody's trying, eventually after book three, you're gonna be like, ain't nobody beat this guy, so why would I even spend my $3? I'll go spend this one on this guy who has a, a, a rat who's a samurai and he trains these turtles to become ninjas. That's, that's different, that's interesting. So yeah, you have to think about that kind of thing. Take your idea, think about it. Why is this person here? Who is this person? What is he gonna do with this person? What is his weakness? Not something stupid like, oh, a rock or, you know, uh, something that nobody can, can, can touch. It has to be something that is very easily for him to fall into or be susceptible to. That way it makes for a better story. And I think I said something on another video like water. You know, this guy can do everything except he can't deal with water. So you have your bad guy whose base is like, out there in the ocean he built one of those platform things and he, his whole base is out in the ocean so if the guy comes out there he's got like these powerful fire hoses he can be spraying and the guy has no no ability to stop him if he gets wet so just something simple like that you have to think about that when you after you come up with your idea and in your story because one guy he said he sent me his idea and Basically, he was just going to go around fighting, go fighting evil, going fighting evil. And I'm like, that's it. You, you have to have something. So, you know, when you become that fanboy, as I say, you know, all you think about is fighting evil. And I keep saying, you know, just fighting evil, just fight, 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 fight. And I, I do blame that on Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, and some of the other ones with just every show is a fight. Every show is a dragged out fight. It's good if you can see it on TV and you have the special effects and the sound effects and all that. But after a while, you got to end the fight. And then what happens? Here comes another superpower being and you have to get stronger again. But how much stronger can you get? Because I started watching some of the Dragon Ball the Super and it was like, come on, how strong is this guy going to get? So, yeah, that's, that's just something you have to think about when you after you design your character, after you have your idea. Now, it doesn't have to be a super uh, being. You could have a regular basic story, but a story is a person moving from this point to this point and the problems he or she may have getting to that point. So you'd have to say, what's gonna happen? Like, was it Red Riding Hood was gonna take was it cookies or something to her grandmother because she was sick or something? So you had the wolf in here that stopped her. So that's the, pro the part that you have to work on, that middle part. Okay, where did the wolf come from? How is she going to stop the wolf? And then people are interested. Oh, there's a wolf trying to get this little girl. How is she going to stop her? She's just a little girl. And I think that somewhere along there, they had the, little, the wood chopper guy came along and he killed, the, he, he killed the grandmother, I believe. In the original story, I think it was from Germany, I think it was. The original story, he actually ate the grandmother, and I think he ate the girl. And this is the, they, they watered it down in America. Um, I, I heard it a long time ago. He ate the girl, and then the guy, the little wood chopper guy, came and he killed the wolf, and he cut the wolf's stomach, and he pulled the grandmother and the girl out, and they were alive. And yeah, you can't tell that to, to kids, but but it, it was interesting to hear the original story. Back in the '80s, I believe it was, there was a uh, TV show called Greatest American Hero, I think that was the show called. And the premise was aliens came down and he, look it up on YouTube, aliens came down and he they gave this guy this super suit. It was like a, not like Superman suit, but it was a costume. And the suit gave him uh, superpowers, just incredible powers. But it came with a, a manual how to use it. 
and either the aliens forgot to give him the manual or he lost the manual. So basically, he had to go around and fight crime in his suit and try to figure out how to use it. Like, I uh, remember he was trying to fly because he was like, I wonder can I fly? And he kept jumping up, jumping up, jumping up and falling down. And then some little kid saw him and he was like, oh, uh, uh, uh. And the kid was like, everybody knows when you fly, you have to put your arms out. So when the kid left, he ran and he did it and he started flying, but he was still jerky because he, he didn't really know how to control it. So the whole series was about him trying to overcome um, his, uh, not liability, his lack to control the suit. And it made for a good show. And I think it's a, it might have been the very last show. The aliens came back and said something like, oh, we forgot to give you the manual. And uh, the user's manual. And they gave it to him. And he was thumbing through it. And he's like, oh, look, I can shrink. And then he shrunk down. And he was like in the grass. And then he came back up. And he's like, this is great. Now I can use the suit fully. And he's like, yeah, what else is in the manual? And he looked. And he's like, he left the manual shrunken in the grass. So basically, I think I think that's how the show ended like that, where he had to start all over again. But that's a good story concept to make people continue to watch it. He does not know how to use it. He's struggling to use it. And, you know, slowly he's getting better and better. So that's something you can think about when doing your stories. One more thing. If you are doing the art yourself, if you wrote the story and doing the art yourself, you don't have to write down so much story-wise as in um, let's just say if, if you're not doing the art and you give your story to somebody to write you'd have to break it down and from panel to panel so that artist could know so you just can't say oh in this panel he fights the bad guy you'd have to say something like uh, in a abandoned warehouse the hero blasts through the door the, the warehouse is dark and cluttered with old machinery parts. At the other end of the dark warehouse, we see the shadow of the bad guy waiting for him. He says, whatever, whatever. And then the, the uh, hero rushes in to, to battle the guy. Panel two, you have to say, the two clash, you know, uh, um, and the, the energy from their clashing explodes knocking all the equipment down or, or around or into the walls you'd have to, to break it down like that if you are not um doing it yourself doing the art yourself because if you're doing the art yourself you kind of see that but you're going to have to learn how to describe a scene and each scene for each panel you have to learn how to describe it you just can't say he faced off against this person you have to give the artist um the visual picture i sent uh, just a quick script to one guy who wanted to to do his own and i think one of the things i said was in a um what was it that i said i wrote down in the script and i and i wrote it so that he can kind of see it himself i didn't want to give him 100 percent direction but i said it was like a penthouse executive office and i described you know that it was it was um um no i didn't i was a penthouse executive office with a large picture window where you could see the sun setting in behind the other tall buildings. So with that, I want him to be able to say, okay, so if this is an executive office and penthouse, it's gotta have nice stuff. It's gotta be big. If it's got a big picture window to it, um, you can see the city, you know, how, how high up is it? You know, at what point um, can you, you see the buildings? And I mentioned about the shadow because it was a creature laying on the floor that he had to draw and then the shadow was coming in making the creature look even creepier from the setting sun so with those kind of things in mind with me writing that stuff down he can say he he would have to say as an artist okay so uh the sun is setting there's a shadow from the creature from the sun you know, where, what, what perspective, what angle am I going to be able to draw this on to see this creature and the shadow and this guy's office, where is the guy's desk, um, located compared to where the windows located. So all these things you would have to kind of describe to the artist, unless you're doing it yourself. So that's another part in writing that you have to do. It's not just the story about, oh, the clown and he, he ran away and this and that every step you have to describe it. If he takes a car, you can say he just stole a car and he drove down the highway. What kind of car did he steal? Did he steal a sports car? Did he steal a bus? Did he steal a truck? Is it a raggedy truck? Uh, is it smoking? You know, so you'd have to describe all of that stuff. Okay, so hopefully I didn't go too far off subject with the 
with the idea to store it because I've been meditating on this for about three weeks and I had the, 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 in my head, but it just wasn't all pulled out. So I said, let me go ahead and film this and maybe it'll come out in a good order to where you can understand it. So hopefully you understood what I was saying. And right now I'm still thinking, okay, is there something I left out? Because I always do that at the end of the video. Make sure you guys have it. If I have to go over it two or three times, so let me quickly pause this and then I'll think about what I said and then throw in whatever else is left or whatever else is missing. Okay, so you know what an idea is. You have to have reason for that idea to exist and to grow. You have to have people around that idea to help it to, to blossom, to bloom. There has to be an ending to that idea and a reason for that person to, I think I said that, want to actually do what he does. So when you start working on those, not necessarily in order, do the beginning, find out your ending, and then the middle will come. It will come because you can go backwards. As I said, he had all these powers and he found out he was running out of power. So the bad guy found out, found out he was running out of power. So let me help him use all his powers by doing all this heat, this chaos. So that's a good way to do your story. And as I said, think about how long do you want your story to go? If it's a brand new story for you, do six issues. Try to try to work it out to where at the end of the sixth issue, uh, it ends. You can always bring the character back or rejuvenate his power or something, but don't think it should go for 40, 50 books thinking, oh, it's going to take off. See how it does with your six books. And then when it takes off, then you can bring some more in and add some new characters as you go. But don't try to cram everybody in at one time. Stick with your main characters, then bring other people in later. If your book takes off and if people like it, it's like, you know, you start out with Batman. Then you had Robin, then you turned him into Nightwing, but then there's another Robin and another Robin, and then it was Batgirl, and then Batwoman, and whatever, whoever else is in there. Then you, I think Batwing is in there now, so I think that's the Bat family. Um, but of course you have your villains and so forth, but he didn't bring, the writer didn't bring all of these group, this whole group in at one time, Batman, Robin, Nightwing, because that would have been too much and would have took away from Batman himself. So concentrate on your main character and your villain and then go from there work that out work the detail out of who is the villain why is he doing and that would be a good story dc you always focus on the good guys focus on the bad guys who is cheetah what does cheetah do when she's not trying to rob a bank where does she live at does she have a part-time job does she work at the circus i think that would be good if somebody did a book on villains you know why are they getting together, how do they contact one another? What do they do in between getting their butt kicked by the Justice League or whoever? Where do they go? Where do they live? Or do they have friends? What's their motive for robbing banks? Because they just want to rob banks because they're deep in debt? Uh, that would be a great story for somebody to do, be it DC, Marvel, or, or you guys out there. Do a book on villains. That's something I thought about, but I'm too deep into everything else I have. Maybe later, once Ten Tyler Studios gets rolling, I'll do something like that. But by thinking about that, you know, villains and so forth, your mind will, will work a little harder and you can translate that to your good guy. Why does a bad guy rob a bank? Uh, I'm in debt. I have children. I have to do that. Okay, so why does the hero save people? Because he is... Um, saw somebody die and he don't want to see that or he he did something it was an accident and he caused that person to die and he don't want that to happen again and he's seeing that this person is causing the same thing to help to keep to make people die so the reason it has to be a good reason so yeah somebody work on a bad guy thing let me know how it goes if not i'll do it myself all right so i think that's about it i did my little ranting and raving but hopefully doing all that ranting and raving you did get something out of starting an idea and working to complete a story. As I say, I can't complete your story because I have no idea what your story is about, but you use these little steps and then your story should be completed. And it takes a while to do a story. Don't think you can do it in 24 hours. There's no way because you have to have stories on all your background characters as well, which is why I say concentrate on your main character and your villain and maybe the supporting crew, his best friend or his wife or his co-worker. And don't go too far out of that in the beginning. Explain to us, the reader, uh, who the guy is, who the clown is, 
why he's doing what he does, what caused him to do that, and then what's happening because of that. Don't bring too many people in on his cousin called or his aunt is sick or the bus driver owed him a favor and don't, don't get into all of that. Just stay with your main guy for at least several books till we get to know him or her and then bring in the rest of the people. So I think that's gonna do it for it. And it was like 39 minutes, 33 seconds right now after, before editing. You know, my thing cuts off around 40 minutes, I believe. So anyway, so I'm going to end this video. I hope you did find that helpful. Please subscribe, share the video, put it on your video site so people can see it and then help me grow so I can continue to do more videos. So that's it for me and I will see you guys in the next video.